shopping cart itself. What needs to be on the shopping cart page? Let's go back to the site where we bought our hoodies. Here's the shopping cart. Let's take a closer look. Obviously, the first thing you're going to need are the products themselves. Make sure the name of the product is the same as it was on the product page to avoid confusion. Oh, and make it link back to the product page. Here's something important to remember. Every time a client places an item in the shopping cart, the image must appear in the correct color and style. For example, we selected a pink hoodie and a purple one. They are displayed here separately so that it's clear we're getting what we selected. Imagine if there was a default image of a black hoodie and only the text said one pink and one purple. As soon as the customer's eye saw the black hoodie, he'd think, uh-oh, something's wrong. To avoid shopper confusion, display exactly what the shopper chose. The next thing that the shopping cart must have is the ability to change the order. That means a way to edit the details, increase or decrease the amount, or remove an item from shopping cart. Then of course, you need to display the subtotal and total, including tax. If you have the information necessary to do so, display shipping charges here as well. If relevant, you might want to write something like free shipping anywhere in the US. Don't forget to include a place to enter discount codes if you use them. Also, you must show correct information about discounts. For example, buy one, get one free. What else should be on the page? You must have a link to take the shoppers to the checkout page. Of course, it should be the most prominent button on the page. It's also a good idea to give shoppers a continue shopping button. Additional things to include are payment methods and a link to the return policy. Notice, there's also a link here to more complete shipping information. So what's left? Well, you may want to suggest additional items that your shoppers might like. The shopping cart we've been looking at doesn't do that. They keep the page very clean. But Amazon and other sites use every opportunity to make suggestions. So for instance, if a shopper puts a wooden cutting board, bowl, and salad servers in the shopping cart, similar items will appear as suggested labels frequently bought with, or you might also like. So let's recap. Your shopping cart page should include the products, and don't forget to make sure that the images reflect the chosen styles and colors. You need to include a way to make changes to the order, such as buying two of a product instead of one. You must include a way for shoppers to delete an item. List the subtotal and the total, including tax. If you know what it's going to be, for instance, if the shopper is signed in and you know the location, include shipping charges. Also, include general information about shipping and a link to complete shipping data. Supply any discount info and leave a field to write in a discount code if relevant. Provide links to continue shopping and to check out. And make sure the checkout button is the most prominent thing on your page. As well, provide information on the return policy or links to return policy page. Finally, you might want to make some shopping suggestions. That could turn into additional sales. Before we wrap up this session, there are a few more considerations you need to know about shopping carts. Remember back in the first lecture we said there had to be a shopping cart icon on the home page, preferably in the top right hand corner? Let's expand on that rule now. The shopping cart always needs to be visible from any page on your website. Think about it. When a customer is ready to start the checkout process, you want to make it easy. Another thing to keep in mind is the urgency factor. Urgency drives people to purchase. I'll give you an example. Let's say a shopper sees a jacket that he likes and he's not sure if he wants to buy it. He's on the fence, metaphorically. Shoppers will often decide not to decide. They figure they'll think about it and possibly buy it another time. Well, once they leave the page, they often don't return. However, if it says next to the jacket or on the product page or on the shopping cart page that there are only two left in his size, he'll be much more likely to purchase. The same goes for sales and reductions. Instead of just writing 40% off, you can add to that only two days left. This is what's called the urgency effect. Urgency can turn an undecided browser into a buyer. Now here's something to avoid. When shoppers click to add a product to the shopping cart, don't ask them to register. Shoppers don't enjoy registering, and they shouldn't be asked to do this at that stage of the game. How big a difference does it make? Well, Marks and Spencers, 
the famous British department store, used to ask customers to register with an email and password when they added a product to the cart. When they removed the registration request, sales increased. In fact, they increased by $300 million a year. It makes good sense to follow their example. We'll talk more about the registration in the future lectures. Finally, what about a customer who put an item or two in the shopping cart and then left your site? Even if they don't register, you can keep track of the items. They may come back a few days later and want to review the items they chose. This information needs to be saved with cookies. Make sure you use them. The shopping experience from the product page to checkout should be smooth. You don't want any bumps in the road. Each little problem a shopper encounters may cause him or her to leave your site. So think about making your customer's journey as smooth and seamless as possible. Good luck.